What's up guys? So this week I'm covering CLIs, otherwise known as command line interfaces. So technically Julia can already run in the terminal if you call Julia and you call the script file, but sometimes you want more complexity and you want to add flags and you want to add more optional arguments or any of those kind of sorts. In this case, I'll be covering arg parse, which is one of the CLI-like programs that Julia has. It's also very similar to the Python version, and I believe it's actually just based off of that one. I'll also briefly mention some other ones that also do CLIs, but arg parse seems to be the one that a lot of people use. I'm kind of going off of the stars on the program. Arg parse definitely has the most out of all the other ones. But I'll show the other ones just in case if you like that documentation better. As you may also notice, I'm doing a little bit of a different kind of production here. And you may see some changes to my channel over the summer since I have a little bit more time. We'll see how this works out. All these little changes are just little additions to improve upon my channel. Hopefully you like it. Please give this video a like. And if you enjoy the content on my channel, please give it a subscribe. Okay, done with all of that. Let's go into the actual arg parse and some of the documentation we have. Okay, so this is arg parse that we have here. This is the GitHub. All these links will also be provided in the description. As you can see, it was the last commit was a couple months ago, so it looks like it's still being maintained pretty well. And they have a lot of documentation. If we go here, this is the actual main site for the documentation and what I'm pretty much following for my examples. Okay, so other versions is this one called arg macros, slightly different, and there's not actually that much documentation on the GitHub. But if you go to the website, this has some more documentation, how to install it, how to use it. I'm not fully going into this one, but maybe you like this documentation better. So this is another example that I came across. So the last one I came across is this one called uh, Comic Con, Comic Con whichever. <laughs> and um, this one also seems to be a similar idea. It has an example that I guess is supposed to take arg parse and then it will create the flags and whatever. Now I'm, I'm being very vague about these because I haven't used them. I'm just more showing them. If you come across the, another one called cli.jl, it's actually pointed towards this one now. So I guess this is the newer version of it that the, the main developer programs. So those are all just other examples. We're focusing on arg parse. I like arg parse. It's what I've used in Python. The documentation is very similar here in Julia. I think it gets the job done. Now getting to the code, let's go into how we set this up and how you can create a CLI for your Julia script. Now, first things first, you need to install arg parse. So make sure you do that in your REPL. You have that installed and check your status. And then first, this is one of the first functions that you'll see in their example and similar to what I'm doing here. Let's go through some of the code that I have here. And this first function is actually what designs all the command line and all the, the function calls that you can make for your script. So going into this first function, we have this s variable. This is the settings that we're designing for our script. And then here are actually all the settings that we're just designing. And I create a space between them just so it's a bit easier to read. And we can go into how these flags work. So I have one flag called display. And there's also a shortened version with just the D. And the help message says displays data. The type of input it takes is a Boolean. And in this case right now, it's default to false. But it will take a Boolean of true or false. Same idea with plot. But you can see with plot, the help message would be plots data path. You can see that this one doesn't have the flags in front of it that actually makes it a positional argument. And this is the path to the data file. Another thing here is I'm requiring this one to be true. So when you're running this script, you have to provide a path argument. All these ones are optional and they already have a default to set the false. And we're going to see how that produces out. Now, our main function is what runs everything. And here we have the parsed args, so the parsed arguments. And this is coming from the command line function that I just showed. I'm going to display what parsed args is so we can see how it works. And then right now it's just going to do a print line just so we uh, know when the program's done. So first you can already see that I'm not running in the REPL. I have Julia, I have the program here, and then I'm calling the help message. And this is actually what's going to display all the documentation that you see typed up here. Okay, so you can see it's describing it a little bit. It has a positional argument. It's putting out those help messages. It's also adding extra information if you have those parameters. So arg types is a Boolean, so it's showing that. And then it has what the default is. So it's just adding that onto your help message. And now let's try to call the actual commands. Okay, so before it called a help message and that just produced this, but this time now that I'm giving an actual argument, so this is going to be to that path variable up here. This is going to be produced out and it's going to go to the actual main function. 
Okay, and now you can see here it's actually doing a display of parsed args and it's showing what these values are. So display and plot are default to false, so it's already showing that. And then path is displaying that string that we actually fed it into in the terminal. So that, that seems to be working out. So now let's actually try to get some utilization out of this script. All right, now going back to the top, I have some extra packages here. I have delimited files and I have plots, and that's gonna be for my other function calls. This didn't change at all, but my main function is a little bit different now. So no matter what, it has to take in a path, and that path is gonna be fed into this function called parse data, which I'm gonna show in a moment, and you can actually see it down there. But the other two optional arguments are are booleans and right now they're set to false so because they're default false these two if statements won't happen but if they're set to true then it will run these two specific functions whether it's called show data or plot data now if we go down to what these functions do they're all pretty simple parse data all it does is it takes the path it opens up the data file and returns that matrix now just because we parse the data doesn't mean we're going to show it so if I actually set, have it set to false we won't see anything but if I set that display flag to true then it'll actually display it out and we'll see a matrix while if i have that display data set to false and rather have the plot flag set to true it will plot out the data and save that figure so pretty simple function calls this script is pretty simplistic and really i don't need functions for all these i could just put all these into the if statements but it's good to break up everything just to show what this data file is in this case it's just a simple two column file it's going zero to nine and then one to 1.9 so nothing special about this Okay, so first going to this first function call, I'm going to call the program and then I'm just going to feed it the path. But because I'm not sending anything to true, we're not going to actually see any data and we're just going to see this print line. Okay, now that was pretty simplistic. Program done. Also kind of anticlimactic. We didn't get to see anything. So now let's try to run with some flags. So if I'm doing the same thing, I have my argument, but now I'm going to put the D flag and I'm going to put true. And now you can see it's displaying the, that two column matrix and it's displaying all that data from that data file. Now let's see if we wanted to make it into an actual plot. So in this case, rather than putting that D flag, we would put the P flag, set that to true. Okay, and okay, so I'm getting some warnings. This is just depending upon what environment you're working in. I think this is because I'm working in a PowerShell, but PowerShell, terminal, whatever. Windows is weird sometimes. But you can see I got this program done. Now it's not supposed to display a plot, it just saves a figure. So now if I go into my actual directory, and here is the figure that's saved out. Now, good reason that CLIs are helpful is you have a complex Julia program. You want to be able to run it in a scripts file, a bash file. Bash files, you're just running all these different commands. If you have a Julia program set up with a CLI, then that allows you to call that pretty easily, hopefully painlessly, in your bash file. Bash itself is a whole other monster. You don't know how to code in bash, something else to learn. <laughs> but if you do code in bash and you want to turn your Julia files into CLIs, this is a way to do it. That's hopefully kind of painless to you. And that's what I have for you guys this week. Arg parse is pretty much the one that I use. That's mainly because back in Python, I also use their arg parse and the documentation looks fairly similar. If you've used the other ones, I'm open to hearing how they work in the comment sections. Let me know if you've used them before. I'm curious if they're any faster, any better whichever our parts looks pretty simple to me. So that's why I've always stuck with it, but it's, it may just be old dog, new tricks, whatever. And that's what I have for you this week. If you have any other libraries or topics you want me to cover, feel free to comment in the sections below, tweet at me at Twitter at DJ's office hours or email me at DJ's office hours at gmail.com. Hope you learned something new and I'll see you guys next week.